Hey, what's going on guys? My name is CarQ, and today we're gonna go over one common mistake for each support hero. Going down the list first up would be Ana. Very often I get the question of how I've been able to keep a win rate above 50% for Ana in the current meta. What do you do when there's a Winston, Genji, and Tracer constantly applying pressure to you? The common mistake here for Ana is playing in isolation, or in other words, staying in the back and away from your team. I believe many Ana players are still stuck in the mindset that playing a healer equates to staying in the back, and staying in the back lines equates to being in a safer position. However, this is quite far from the truth as you're actually safer if you move along with your team. The passive play in the back line style may have worked better in the triple tank meta with three tanks on the team brawling it out in the front, but right now there's no way you can live with a properly executed dive from the enemy team. Even if you sleep the first Winston jumping on your head, you now have to worry about the Tracer, Genji, and even D.Va sometimes applying pressure to you if they catch you alone in the back. You're actually much better off moving along with your team so they can help peel divers off of you while you get the added bonus of throwing easier grouped bio nades, team capitalization of sleep darts, and bigger targets to shoot at. The next hero on the list is Lucio. With Lucio 2.0 out, his damage buff, increased boop distance, and stronger healing aura makes him one of the best peelers for your team. The mistake that most Lucio players make is not peeling for specific teammates, usually your other immobile supports or DPS heroes. The decreased aura range with Lucio 2.0 means he must be at the right place at the right time, and it's important to realize your priorities in order to get the most value out of Lucio. So as fun as it is to play the super fast while riding aggressive Lucio and going after the enemy's squishies, you need to make sure the scenario is optimal for that sort of aggression. Can you guarantee your aggressive wall ride deep within enemy lines for an environmental kill will have more value than keeping your Ana alive? The best Lucio players know how to weigh the risks and potential values of their plays, and if you're ever in doubt, stick with peeling and keeping most of your team within your auras. People also often underestimate the damage potential of the new Lucio. In case you didn't know the actual numbers, you can deal 80 damage with body shots plus a 25 damage boop into a 30 damage melee combo, giving you a total burst of 135. In a perfect world where you magically land all 4 headshots into the combo, you can dish out 215 damage in about a second's worth of time. This can easily force an enemy tracer to recall, a Genji to scream I need healing, and ensures the rest of your team can receive continued support. Mercy is the next one on the list, and if I could have a dollar for every instance I saw a Mercy player fly way too far with your guardian angel leading to her death, I could probably pay back my student debt. Please, for the love of mercy, learn to discipline your guardian angel ability. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't fly all the way to a teammate, there are plenty of reasons to do so, such as juking an enemy or if that specific ally will put you in a safer position once you fly to them. However, there are many cases where it's much more optimal to stop your guardian angel once you're within beam range. How do you stop your guardian angel? With toggle on, you tap once to fly to a teammate's direction and tap once more to stop. With toggle off, you fly for as long as the button is held down. Both have their pros and cons, but whatever setting you have it on, assess the danger you may put yourself in before you decide to fly to an ally. Zenyatta is the next hero on the list, and this Omnic has the best damage output across all support heroes. I know it's obvious, but with that being said, I feel that the common mistake many Zenyatta players are making is underutilizing the destructive power of his charged secondary fire. We all know the power that Discord Orb can bring to a team, but Zenyatta can charge up and peek around a corner with a 230 damage surprise burst, amped up to about 299 if they're discorded, and even 598 if they're all headshots. I believe the reason why many Zenyatta players are underutilizing this ability is because in the earlier iterations of Zenyatta, using your secondary fire kept you locked in its animation afterwards for one second due to its internal cooldown. Many players back then argued that it was generally just more effective to keep spamming primary fire instead. However, a patch went out in March in which Zenyatta received a buff in A, removing the weapon spread, and B, reducing that 1 second recovery time to 0.6 seconds. That minor change significantly increased the fluidity and viability of the orb volley, making it terrific for bursting down unsuspecting enemies. The final hero on the list is Symmetra. I feel many players are incorrectly sequencing her abilities when catching players out of position with their kit. Let's say no one checks the room you're hanging out in and you're able to surprise the enemy Ana who's standing relatively still, scoped in and healing her allies on the point. Pop quiz, what do you do? Do you set up more sentries for a sentry trap? Do you start running towards them while holding down your primary fire? 
No, the correct answer would be to start up a charged secondary fire and try to land that first before holding down the primary fire. Why? The surprise burst may be so sudden that she cannot react to nade or sleep you. Too many times I see Symmetra's initiate with an uncharged level 1 beam. Remember that it takes time for her damage to ramp up once the beam is tethered, and it's quite weak for the first 2 seconds, so consider setting up a charged secondary fire to first dish out the 125 damage, then into the beam to kill them much quicker. Anyways, I think that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.